Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamualaikum. Yes, hello everyone. This is Postal Modeling and Simulation. Today we will be taking lecture number 24, which is about approximation of higher order systems. Okay. And the first question comes into your mind like, why should I approximate for, to, for, to, from a higher order system? And, and to know why, uh, and to know, so to know why, uh, actually, if you can remember that we started with something called model equations, right? You're trying to model some real systems and these systems were like uh, a mixer, right? It was like a mixer or we have a CSTR process in which it is, we have a reaction here. We have a reaction and, and we said that uh, for these different systems. We also took the search tank, if you just can remember that as well. Uh, and with all of the systems that we have taken, uh, we we want to study how the height changes with time because it's an important factor for the level uh, not to overflow or to empty up. Uh, and for the reactions, it was important for us to know what is the product. So we found how does concentration change with time and we also want to know how does temperature change with time because it really affects my 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 concentration, uh, which affects the Arrhenius equation and the rate of reaction. Uh, so uh, so dt by dt is really very important in this case. And for any closed system, it's very important also to know how does pressure change with time. And of course, there are other systems like you see, like there's a distillation column or a separator. <coughs> okay, and, and what else do we have? So we, here, of course, we need to know how pressure changes time, how temperature, definitely we need to know how temperature changes with time because it is the most important factor for the separation of the, uh, of the uh, feed here, whatever the feed is. Okay, and, and of course, you want to know how to control uh, you, uh, when you try to condensate and, and collect the level here uh, and collect the, 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 sorry, the liquid in which you are trying to get as a distillate and sell. And of course you have a reflux here. So you may have some kind of uh, a control on the height and on the pressure of that tank. So again, you need the height by dt. You may also have some kind of a level here collected. So another heat so another height by dt. So you see the amount of model equations that we have, right? And what did we say? Well, studying all those model equations, we can represent, we can represent those model equations. We can represent all those model equations in many different kind of a different dimension. And one of it was the S domain, where we obtained the transfer function, where we did the linearization, plus deviation, plus Laplace, right? Plus Laplace to get what? To get the transfer function, to get the transfer. Okay, the, I, I skipped two letters here. <laughs> to get the transfer functions. And what does the transfer function tell me? It tells me a relationship between an output and an input, an output and input, which could be the first order, or it could be second order. And we had studied how does a first order and a second order look like, right? So this is like tau square s square plus two xi tau s uh, plus one. Now, uh, what do we have? It's, it's, the, the question is that uh, actually we can have higher order systems, okay? We can have higher order systems. So higher order systems are going to be more complicated systems and higher order systems uh, will definitely have something like if I'm going to go to a third order, it will have, for example, one over SQ plus three S squared plus two S plus one. Or if I want to go not to a third order, but I want to go to a higher order of a fourth order. And going to a fourth order, again, this will be like y over x over x over s is equal to whatever, 5 over 5 s to the power 4, 2 s to the power 3 plus uh, s squared plus s plus 1, okay? So uh, what I'm trying to say that we can go to higher orders and so on. Uh, but what was discovered, what was discovered that 
uh, in looking at the responses, in looking at the responses, if this was my my first order is very well known, like okay, but I'll go to the second order system. So the second order system looks like something like that. Okay, it looks as something like that. Okay, if I go to a second order system, it will look as something like that. If I go to a third order system, it will look as something like that. If I go to a fourth order system, fifth order system, so and so on. So what do they call this? They call this an S shape. You will get some kind of an S shape if you if if you continue on with the higher order systems. And by that, what we are trying to say is that because higher order systems, uh, it's because that higher order systems react higher order systems react similarly to the second order system to the second order system the best that we can do is that as to do what we will approximate we will approximate and approximating is a very good idea. Why? Because we cannot study every kind of a system of a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth order. Especially that uh, everyone needs like some kind of an analysis. What do I mean? We already know how to analyze this system here. And we know what's the meaning of KM and what is the meaning of Tau. We also know what are the meaning uh, of, of the tau and xi and when it will be over damped and when it will be under damped process and so we can analyze our system and so if we can analyze our system here as for a first and second order it is best it is best if we can if you can uh, somehow approximate this either to a second order or to a first order system okay to a second and a first order system and a key here a key of something that we need to know here is that uh, you, you can see here there is some kind of of like uh, a little push to the right a little push to the right so if I can fit a uh, fit a system to this higher order system it looks like it's like there's a time delay it's not a time delay it looks like my response is starting from where is starting from here okay starting from here and going uh, to the right so starting from this point starting from this point I just can't say well it's like there's a time delay there's nothing happening in this part here and then I'm going to have what I'm going to have my system going as a first order or an over damped process a first order or an over damped process plus a time delay so that is the idea of of, of, of the approximation method so I'm, I'm introducing I'm introducing uh, the, 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 the idea of time delay okay I'm introducing the idea of time delay okay the idea of time delay which is e to the power minus theta s uh, to, to better for better approximation okay to or for better approximation okay so I think so you got some idea now what you are trying to do okay so this is my whole picture this is my whole picture uh, I will manage now to approximate higher order systems okay to a first or a second order system uh, and why do we do that because we know and understand how we can analyze those systems here and we can really get very good approximations and uh, why we can't get very good approximations because my higher order system react very similar to the second order system okay so this is second order system okay and so we will be able to approximate so what we are going to do now we will try to study how to approximate the higher order systems and by that I think so we are ready to, to start up 
uh, with, with, the, with the idea of approximation. So the first concept that we're trying to introduce here that will be very important to, for our approximations is the time delay, is the time delay. Uh, so what what do we mean by time delay? The time delay is we as we said it's like there's a delay of uh, there's a delay of the effect. What do we mean by the delay of the effect? So if I open this fluid here, so what happens? My fluid flows as I open it. The height does not change. It will change after the fluid flows and it reaches here okay it flows and it reaches here and at the time that it reaches to the level now the level is going to be changing and 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 going up so what we are trying to say here we are trying to say that the height which is a function of what can be changed as an input uh, even though that it is a first order we are going to add a time delay. We are going to add a time delay. Why? Because there is some time for this fluid to move from that point that you are trying to open the valve till it reaches to my system here. And this is simply calculated as the distance. Uh, the, you know the velocity is called the distance over time. So if I want to calculate the time, it will be distance over the velocity. As simple as that. And this this is the time delay. This is the time delay. And that is the fluid flow on a pipe. And another example is the transport of a solid, solid material like a conveyor belt. So the time they put your bank into that belt, it's like inside the plane, right? <laughs> but actually it did not get into the plane. There is some time delay where it gets into that plane. Okay, so uh, chemical analysis, also chemical analysis have some time delay. And an example of that is that uh, for, uh, it's not always that you can know what is the concentration here. You can know it through model equation, but if you want to put a set, uh, an indicator here, uh, and this indicator, the analyzer uh, indicator, and then it's going to transmit. Uh, so. Uh, it's not always that it is it is possible that you can measure the concentration. So what do we do? Uh, usually we take samples. Okay, so there's one person comes here and he takes a sample in his hand. Okay, a sample and taking the sample uh, or taking it to the lab. So, okay, so we have a sample taken to the lab. So this person is working in the lab. Uh, this person is working on the lab, having his beaker, having his chromatography, and he's working and analyzing and seeing how, what is the analysis. And then it tells him that what is the concentration, okay? So sometimes it will take, if you're talking about chromatography system, it may take about 45 minutes. It may take less, if it's less easier uh, uh, detection uh, software, or sorry, detection instruments. So let me say 30, 35 minutes. So all this is a time delay. Time delay in what sense? I don't have the information of this. I don't have the information of the concentration. And, and that is a time delay in the measuring system, in the measuring system, okay? So if I just can recall that we have taken an example in solving where we said that this is a measuring sensor for concentration uh, with time. So once concentration changed, the measuring sensor of the concentration reacted as this response. And this looks like a very good concentration, uh, a very good concentration uh, uh, measuring sen sensor. But imagine that you have a delay and you have something like that. Uh, I don't know why I have this thing get appearing. Like something like that. And then it goes like that. Okay. Which means that there's a big delay and this delay will affect my process. Why it will affect my process? Because I want to decide, should I continue with the change in my concentration or the feed or not? So I may just wait for another 45 minutes to decide what to do because I don't know what to do if I don't have information, okay? So, so, so these kind of the things that time required to do the analysis or sampling line uh, delay, they are all kind of, time, uh, kind of, uh, of, of a time delay. So these are the examples of some types of time delays. 
and this is how it's represented in the time domain and we already have taken that in the custom of inputs and of course we already said that this is the way how we are going to display our time delay e to the power minus theta s okay beautiful okay if this is the way how we can appear it what is the approximation so and this approximation to time delays is good because we can go to this direction or if we have this form we have this form we can go to that direction so that will help us in some kind of approximations so what does uh, the 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 pad approximation tells us uh, sorry what does that pad approximation tells us so looking at the pad approximation uh, uh, if you go back to your book, and I, I don't know which page is that, page 98, chapter 6, and you look at the PADA approximation, okay? The, so the PADA approximation, the PADA approximation is that. So we can approximate with the six, uh, equation 635. E to the minus theta s is equal to 1 minus theta over 2 s over 1 plus theta over 2 s. And where did, where did this come from? It came from the pad approximation, which is which is called the two two pad approximation, which is one minus theta over two s plus theta two s square over twelve plus uh, or minus and then plus or it's, it's, it's a series a series on the numerator and the denominator. So this series we are just taking the first two terms uh, just to make it very simple. So we are just taking the first two terms. It's like linearizing it in some sense. And because we are taking just the first two terms, it will be 1 minus theta over 2s and 1 plus theta over 2s. Okay, so that is the pad approximation. Uh, if we will go, if we will go to the uh, to, to the so-called the Taylor series approximation, the Taylor series approximation says that <coughs> this is like the function uh, to the uh, this is the function. And we take, uh, if you can remember, taking the, the derivative uh, uh, and then you substitute for s is equal to 0 to 1. And how are you going to approximate it for using a Taylor series? This is given by Taylor series, okay? So it has a way of how to derive it. I'm not going to go through the derivation. So e to the power minus theta s is 1 minus theta s plus theta 2 over 2 factorial s squared minus theta cube over 3 factorial s cubed plus theta 4 over 4 factorial s to the power 4 and so on. And again, what we want to select, we just want to select the first two terms, the first two terms, and that will be 1 minus theta s. And, and based on what we have said so far, based on what we have said, uh, uh, this is what we are going to have. So this is my approximation as a pad approximation. Which, which depends on that pad approximation series, the pad approximation series. One minus theta over two s, one over one plus theta two s. So if I have e to the power minus four s, e to the power minus four s, this is going equal to one minus four over two s, which is one minus two s, and one plus two s. So that is the approximation of e to the power minus four s. Okay, something good to learn. What about the Taylor series, okay? A Taylor series, which is which which represents, uh, let me say, it's a simple, less accurate approximation, but it is simple, okay? So that is the beauty of it, that's very simple. And you just say that e to the minus theta s is equal to one minus theta s. Okay, so this is the beauty of this approxim approximation, it's very easy. Okay, so uh, just to uh, summarize this, so we are going to come to our uh, uh, whiteboard here or the blackboard. <laughs> it's Microsoft whiteboard, but I made it black as as uh, as, uh, as a background. Okay, so here we said that we want to use that delay as a very good way of approximating things. So approximation. Okay, of, of time delays, of approximation of time delay. Okay, approximation of time delay. There are two methods of approximation of time delay. And the first method is e to the power minus theta s is equal to 1 minus theta over 2 s over 1 plus theta over 2 s. Okay, and, and this is using what? Using the pad approximation. Okay, this is the pad approximation. 
And if I want to look at the Taylor series approximation, okay, the Taylor series approximation, this is equal to e to the minus theta s is equal to 1 minus theta s. Okay, and actually the Taylor series, it will help me to do a very kind of tricky approximations as well. And this will help me a lot. And uh, for example, uh, if you continue on this example, e to the power minus theta s is also equal to 1 over e to the power theta s. Okay, so I, I didn't do anything. I just put it down there. And e to the power theta s is 1 plus theta s according to Taylor series. Okay, so this is 1 plus theta s. So this will be 1 over 1 plus theta s. <coughs> And what do I have? I have something which looks like, and now you already, oh wow, it just clicked in your mind. This looks like one over s plus a, over, or k over tau s plus one, right? k over tau s plus one. It looks very similar. So now we can approximate this. We can approximate this to what? To e to the power minus theta s, okay? So this is the beauty of that. This is the beauty of it. And there's one thing that I also need to mention. Uh, after showing you those approximation to two approximation methods, uh, if you go back and look at these approximation methods, uh, the thing that you're going to find out here, looking at the figures, that by the way, the, the, the e to the power minus theta s, which is approximated using either PAD A or using the uh, the, the Taylor series method is not accurate, okay? It is not accurate. And it will have something that you can see here that it's not that accurate to that system that I'm trying to, uh, to, 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 to approximate. But by the way, it will be very good accuracy if it is, uh, if it is with another, with the transfer function, okay? With the transfer function. So by itself, it's not very accurate, but if you put it with another uh, transfer function, it will be accurate. And what do I mean by that? I mean that if I want to approximate, for example, for example, if I have, if I have a system here, my G of S, okay, if my G of S uh, is equal to, <coughs> Okay, uh, is equal to 5 over uh, 6s plus 1. For example, I'm just giving an example here. Uh, to make it easier, well, uh, uh, that's fine. Okay, so this is, this is 5 over 6s plus 1. Uh, now, you cannot, you cannot, it's totally wrong. You cannot, okay, you cannot. Say that I will approximate this, it's like 1 over 6x plus 1 or 1 plus 6s is exactly like this one here. So I'm, so I'm going to say that e to the power minus 6s. This is a bad approximation, okay? This is not good, okay? This is not good. And actually, if you look at it, this is first order. Why to approximate it? Why we want to approximate it? The whole idea is to approximate higher order system to lower order systems. So if I have a system that looks like that now, to, to 20s plus one, into 6s plus 1 into uh, 3s plus 1 and now by mentioning that I want to approximate this uh, and I'm going to take the 1 over 3s plus 1 as e to the power minus 3s and I'm going to take the 1 over 6s plus 1 as e to the power minus 6s and I'm going to keep the, the, the biggest dominant pole here 5 over 20s plus 1 and of course, this will be 5 over 20s plus 1 e to the power minus 9s. And that, sa that says this will be really accurate. So what I was trying to say that if this is accompanied, uh, this time this is accompanied with the, the transfer function, the main, uh, the main effect of that transfer function, it will be a very good approximation. By itself, it is not a good approximation. By itself, it's not a good approximation. Okay, great. So, so going to the next step, we need to some kind build a, a map for our head here, and this map I'm going to represent it as representing it as follows. 
So what do we have? We have an approximation method. So we want to approximate approximation methods. And doing in, in doing the approximation method is either that I have a transfer function of a higher order. Okay, so I have a transfer function of a higher order. And because I have a, a transfer function of a higher order, I want to approximate using different methods. What are these methods? Please tell me. The, there are three methods that you can use here. One of the popular method is the Skogstad method. We did not take that yet. We will take it after a while. The other method that we can take here is for Taylor series, using the Taylor series, and I already explained that. And the third method, we are going to use a pad approximation, and we already, already showed you that, okay? And this is in which case, if you have a transfer function, if you have a transfer function. So what do I mean if I have a transfer function? So if we have something that looks like that, five over 20 S plus one, uh, and I would like that in a different color. Okay, so if I have something like, uh, I'll write it here, five over 20 S plus one into six S plus one into three S plus one into S plus one, uh, even I'll put a time delay e from minus 5s. So how to approximate this? How to approximate this? And now what I have is a transfer function. So if you have the transfer function, these are the, the popular methods that you will take in this course that to, to, to approximate this to a lower order. So you're going to approximate using Skogestad method, Taylor series method, pad approximation method to approximate this higher order system to a lower order. Well, to what order we can approximate? We can approximate to first order plus dead time. Okay, so we can approximate to first order plus dead time, plus time delay or dead time. It has the same meaning. Or we can approximate to a second order plus dead time or TD if you want to put it. Okay, so you can approximate to second order plus time delay. So we can approximate to what? To first order plus that time and to second order plus that time. All of them, all of them can be used to do that. Okay, so that is the first thing that you have in your head. The second part, the second part in which we didn't take yet as well, that if you have a figure, if you have a figure, and this figure would either look like, uh, just to make it smaller, so if we, it's, it will either look like something like, like that, okay, it's still, I think so, I just want to make it smaller, okay, so it will look like something like that, okay, or it will look uh, something that looks like that, okay. So if I have a figure which is stable, I'm talking about all stability because you cannot approximate to unstable process. So we want to approximate to stable processes. So if I want to approximate either the first part or the second part, let's go to the first part. The first part would either look like, if of course this is not only the, the shape that I could have. I could have a shape like, like that. And of course it could be on the negative side. Uh, so I'm talking about this shape or uh, for example, I'm going to have a shape which looks like that. So, so this is the same, right? Or if I could have a shape which looks like uh, something like like this, okay? It's like an S shape, S shape, okay? An S shape. And this is a very high order system. Just looking at the S shape with a high delay. It looks like a delay here. Okay, so l looking at all those systems, looking at these two systems here, the first thing I'm going to mention about the left side here, all these responses, which are smooth responses, okay, which are smooth responses, not oscillatory. These smooth responses are either first order, okay, it looks like a first order, and I'm going to write the, 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 the uh, like that, so it's like a first order plus time delay. Okay, it looks like a first order plus time delay. All these are like over damped processes, over damped processes. And over damped processes, what do I mean? If I'm talking about an over damped process, I'm talking about 
a second order, okay? And it could also have a time delay. So th th these responses here could be first, <clears throat> we can approximate a first order to them, a plus time delay, okay? Or we can approximate a second order. And what do I mean first of plus time delay? So for example, we can approximate a time delay here plus a first order, okay? Did you see that? So I can do this. Or I can approximate a second order plus time delay, so I like a time delay, and then a second order which checks the small curve here, and it will be more accurate. So what I'm trying to say, I can fit, uh, I can fit a first order and a second order plus time delay in this case. And what methods I can use to do that? I have uh, several methods. Uh, one of my first methods is the S and K method. Okay, and let me take just more to the left here. So I have the S and K method, and, and actually it's not called the S and K method, but it is called the uh, uh, the sun. Uh, I forgot the name. Uh, it's, 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 it's really long. Sangen and Karanaya Swami, something like that. I'm sorry. I'm I'm very sorry for the for pronouncing the names, uh, but I, I just made it simpler to the pronounce. Uh, and through all my friends that I know from different uh, lo locations in the world, they always like a, 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 an abbreviation to their names if it is difficult, okay? <coughs> okay, so that is like SNK method. And this SNK method, <coughs> if you want to fit a first order plus time delay, okay? So this will work to fit a first order plus time delay, not a second order plus time delay. So if I'm requesting to fit a second order plus time delay to one to this figure, for example, you will not use SNK method. If I say fit a first order plus time delay to this figure, you will use this method, okay? And 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 of course, this will have some kind of, of a way of how to calculate it. It depends on a T at 35.3% of km and the t2 at 85 83 or 85 i forgot i really forgot okay of km okay so this is the snk method what about if if you want me to plot a second order plus time delay uh, so if you want me to plot a second order plus time delay i'll tell you well use the smith method okay use a smith method and in the Smith method, we want to fit a second order plus time delay, and we will use something called like the T20, which is 20% of KM, and we are going to use the T60, which is the 60% of KM, okay? And how to do this, we are going to study that, okay? But now you know that if I have a response which looks like that, I can use those methods here. What about if I have something that looks like that? <clears throat> okay, for, I forgot something. There's also one thing more. I want one more method. One more method. Okay, and that one more method, I'm going to say that we, I will call it the slope intercept method. Okay, the slope intercept method. And by the way, there are more methods. Like I can go more as well. It's like the, the, the they also called uh, one of the methods as the initial slope method. The initial slope. Okay. And for this method, the initial slope or the intercept method, what I'm fitting here, I'm fitting a first order plus time delay. And in this case, I'm also fitting a first order plus time delay. Okay, so you can see that these are the methods that we can use to fit a first order uh, plus time delay. <coughs> okay, so these are the methods that we have that we can fit the first uh, fit the first order plus time delay. And these are the advisable methods that I would advise to use if you want to fit a, a, a to a response that looks like these responses here. What about a fibrous response that looks like that? Okay, a response which looks like that, we also have two options here, two options in this method. And it could be more, by the way, okay? It could, there are more. That's not, it could be more, there are more. But it's just because that in this course, we are trying to fit ourselves to some methods here, uh, which opens your mind 
to the future if you're going to continue with in this field. At least this is the basis that what you, you need to know. So if I have a response which looks like that, which means I have an overshoot, right? I have an overshoot, I have the TP peak time, and I have the rise time TR. Do you remember this all? I have the, 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 the settling time, I have the decay ratio, okay? And since I have all this information that I can get from the figure, uh, I can use the damping method. So you already, I think, so you guessed that. So what are the methods of approximation that I have here? I can use the damping method. I can use the damping method. And if you, if you go and search in the internet for damping method, you will not find anything. It's just my terminology that I call it that damping method. And here, of course, in the damping method, you will need the, you need this information, the overshoot, okay, the decay ratio, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the rise time, the peak time, the settling time. And by this, by this that we have either the, using the figure or the equation, we can find the values of what we are going to find and we are going to find uh, the, the first order plus that time, we're going to find, sorry, the second order plus uh, time delay, uh, the first order plus time delay uh, approximation uh, to the system that I have here, okay? Which means that I'm going to find K, Tau, and Xi, right? I'm going to find K, Tau, and Xi. Okay, uh, is there another method that we can use? Yes, we can. But you need to be careful when you use this one because uh, sometimes it doesn't really fit well. Uh, so you're going to use the Smith method and the Smith method, you, you're going to fit definitely, uh, you're going to fit, okay, here's fit. You're going to fit definitely a second order plus time delay, okay? You're definitely going to fit that and you're going to find the T20 and the T60 which represents 20% of KM and how to find that we are going to find out soon. We are going to find out that soon. Okay, so so what did I, I'm trying to do here? I'm time trying to build the, the way of how you tackle approximation methods. <coughs> and what we had taken so far, what we have taken so far is just the pad approximation and the Taylor series approximation and we did not take any good examples yet okay like real examples and but you're going to take that soon so pad approximation and taylor series approximation and the next we are going to take here is this cogstad method okay and then in the next lecture we are going to start covering the other part of it the other part uh, of our problem here which are these methods here uh, and and maybe we take that in one or two lectures, I'm not sure. We, we will look at how that will progress. So now what I'm going to take with you is this Cogstad method, and I'm going to finish the part in which if we have a transfer function, if we have a transfer function, and we want to approximate it to a, to a first or a second order, we can use these methodologies. The two popular ones are the Cogstad and Taylor series. PADA is much less to be used, it has some certain applications, but you're, we are going to concentrate on the first two. Great. Uh, and so going back to our part of the lecture here. So how to do the, uh, the, the, the approximation method? I think so I can do my approximation with an example here. And, and I'll take an example from my own. And, and uh, so I'm going to use here now the Skogestad method. And of course, if I'm using the Skogestad method, I already said that I can fit, I can fit a first order plus time delay, and I can fit a second order plus time delay. So I can fit these two systems here, okay? So taking an example, an example which looks like that now, I'll take like examples which are simple, and then I can make it more complicated if you want. And uh, so like five over, uh, t t uh, 20s plus 1 so this is 20s plus 1 into 10s plus 1 into 
uh, okay, like uh, 5s plus 1 into s plus 1. You see that I always kept the s plus 1, okay, because I can make it more complicated not to put it as s plus 1. Uh, so I'm, I'm just telling you that information, okay? So if you have something that uh, that looks like the, the system that I have here, and I would like to add a time delay e to the power minus 2s, and we see how we are going to deal with this. I also can add, I also can add uh, uh, looking uh, just to make this problem complicated, I'm going to add a zero, one of the zeros. So I'm going to add, for example, s plus, s plus two, okay? Now, with all of what I have mentioned here, with all what I have mentioned here, uh, let's see if we can look at this problem and we can solve it. Okay, uh, now we want to find G's COG, okay? That's COG STAT method. So what do we need to find? First we say, do we want to fit a first order or second order? We want to fit a first order plus time delay. Good, if you want to first, a first order plus time delay, we, uh, we need a transfer function, which looks like what? It looks like k over tau s plus one e to the power minus theta s. So that is my standard form. So what do I need to find? I need to find k's cog, I need to find theta's cog, and I need to find tau's cog, okay? And which means, which all that, that all means that, uh, that I have only three parameters that I need to find out here, okay? I, that I need to find. Okay, so uh, let's continue on. So, uh, so to continue on, my case cog, which is the simplest of all, it is equal to k as long as the first one is in the standard form, which is all s plus one, s plus one. So k cog is equal to k. And in that case, what is my k? My k is five, okay? Oh, I said that's s plus two, my God. Oh my God. So I just made it complicated, the first question. So what do I need to do here? I need to keep this as s plus one. And how do you do this? I divide this by two. I divide this one s, which is divided by two, which means that it will become 0.5 s plus one. So we'll have this as 0.5 s plus one. Of course, if you look at it, like you're taking the half as a common factor, right? Half as a common factor, which is 0.5 s plus one. So this becomes 2.5. Okay, so just to show you what will happen here. So it's like five, s plus two, uh, so what you're doing here, you're just like dividing in, in uh, by half. So you're, you're, you're dividing by two and multiplying by two, okay? So you do multiplying by two and dividing by two. So j just dividing by two, this will be 0.5 s plus one and then multiply by two to become something like that. 10, sorry, I, did, I said 2.5, so it's 10 into, uh, 0.5 s plus 1 okay 10 to 0.5 s plus 1 you want to make sure of your answer what was the answer here it was 5 s plus 10 what is the answer here it is 5 s plus 10 so don't worry this is the right answer okay so you're multiplying by 2 and divided by 2 so it's 10 into 0.5 s plus 1 so so fix, fixing up that part just fixing at that part here that we have okay fixing that part we are going to get the transfer function as the following 10 into 0.5 s plus 1 divided by uh, divided by 20 s plus 1 into 10 s plus 1 into 5 s plus 1 to s plus 1 okay so th this is what we have so what what how can we approximate this using our uh, Skogestad method, okay? So k Skog is equal to the k, okay? And in this case, now it's not five, it's 10. And it's good that we took a more complicated problem because it just makes us <laughs> ready for any kind of a situation that could come in the exam. So, okay, we found k Skog, okay? k Skog, 
is equal to 10. What about tau cog? Okay, so tau cog is equal to the tau of the largest that we have at the denominator plus the half of the tau of the next largest, okay, plus half of the tau of the next largest. And in this case, the largest one is, is 20 and the second largest one is 10. Okay, so largest plus next, next largest. And why do we are taking why we are taking the largest? Because it is the dominant one. If you remember the dominant poles, it will have the most effect. So so the smaller ones are, are just negligible in comparison to that 20. It's not that negligible. I'm doing some kind of approximation. So there is an error. There is an error, but definitely I'm going to use the dominant one. I will not use the smaller ones. So, and if I do that, my approximation will really be very bad. So in this case, my biggest tau is 20 plus the next largest, which is 10 over two. So that will be 20 plus five, 25. Beautiful. I'm having everything here. So let's continue with that, with the theta scog. So with the theta scog, just to make that smaller, to look at everything together. So theta scog, Theta cog is equal to the half of the next term largest. It's just more difficult to write when I'm zooming in. So half of next largest of the tau plus the summation of the rest of the taus. Okay, so, and plus theta. The theta, if I have a theta, and definitely I have a theta, I forgot to write my time delay here. So what do I have here? Uh, what do I have? So my theta cog is equal to tau next largest, which is 10 over 2, plus the summation of the taus. And here the summation of the taus, the idea is that anything in the denominator is added and anything in the numerator is subtracted. So in this case, what do I have? I have the rest, huh? I'm talking about the rest. So the rest are the, the remaining ones, okay? So these are the remaining ones. So I'm going to write here remaining because I forgot to wrote, write this. So this is the remaining ones, okay? So the remaining ones, what do I have? I have five plus one. So this is five, five plus one minus 0. 0.5, okay? Minus four, five plus one minus 0. 0.5. So I'm subtracting the one which is sitting at the top. And actually if this was negative, it will be minus minus, it will be positive, okay? So it's like that. So minus 0. 0.5, plus theta, and theta here is what's the value? Is it minus two or two? Is it minus two or two? It is two, right? It is two, it is, the, it is e to the power minus theta s. So theta is two. So in this case, theta is two. Okay, so don't get confused. Okay, great. So that is five plus six, uh, six uh, minus 0. 0.5 is 5.5, 7.5 which is equal to 12.5, beautiful. So what did I find? I found all my parameters. I found all my parameters. I found the K value, and I found my tau value, tau cog, and I found my theta cog value. <laughs> and all what I need to do is to do what? Is to substitute. And substituting here, I will have the answer is going to be, let me write that in red, okay? I will have my answer will be, 10 multiply e to the power minus 12.5 s divided by tau s plus 1. My tau is 25, 25 s plus 1. Okay, so let me write that in white again. <laughs> okay, it just feels, I just I wanted to make it a li little different here. Uh, over 25 s plus 1. So that is the solution, okay? So that is the solution of my problem here. Looks great, right? A very simple first order solution to my problem here. Well, that was the first part of the Skogestad method. What, what else if I said that, well, I want to fit, I want to fit my g Skog to a second order plus time delay. Aha, uh -huh. okay, now second order, okay, second order plus time delay. So how I can do this? So I'm going to write my system again. So that is 10 to 0.5 S plus one because it's just up there. 
I want to write it very close to myself. So that is 10 to 0.5s plus 1 e to the power minus 2s divided by 20s plus 1 into 10s plus 1 into 5s plus 1 into, I forgot, into s plus 1 into s plus 1. Okay, so what I need to do here, <coughs> what I need to do is that the only ch difference that to fit a second order plus time delay, uh, the only difference is that you're going to fix one of them as if it's not there, okay? As if this is not here, as if this is like not there, you're, it's not there. You're going to put just the final answer. And you're going to start working with this system. You're going to start working with system starting from here. Okay, starting from here. And what does that mean? First, K cog is going to be the same, 10. The tau cog, which says that tau largest plus tau of half of next largest. My largest now is like 10. Plus plus half of next largest is 5 over 2. Okay, so my largest looks like 10 and half of next largest is, is 5. Which we, and we take half of that and this will be 10 plus 5 over 2 which is 12.5. And then the theta cog, the theta cog is equal to half of next largest plus the remaining, okay, plus the remaining taus, the remaining taus, uh, plus theta. Okay, and in this case, half of next largest is 5 over 2, plus remaining tau, and now my remaining are what? These are my remaining ones. This, and this, and then I'm going to add my theta. So that will be plus the remaining tau, which is 1 plus, oh, it's not plus, uh, it's a numerator thing, so it's minus 0.5, and then plus the theta, plus 2. And what will be my theta in this case? It will be 3 minus 0 0.5, 2.5 plus 2.5, which is 5. And we have now my g cog. Based on a second, I'm trying to fit a second order plus uh, time delay. Uh, a second order plus time delay. And what do I have? I have my system, which looks like 10 over my, what, where is my tau? Tau, tau is 12.5, s plus 1 into e to power minus 5s. Well, this this a first, second order? No, <laughs> don't, don't forget the, the, the hidden parts that we left, right? This is the hidden part that we left, which is 20s plus 1. And in, in, in including the 20s plus 1, now it became a second order plus time delay. So it's as simple as that, as simple as that. So this is how we are trying to fit to a first order plus time delay. What about if I go now to the same system that I have, uh, where is my system? Okay, so that is my system here. And I'm going to do that again, solving Taylor series, okay? Because I did not solve using Taylor series. And I want to do this now. So the same example, G of S, where I have my system is equal to 10 and 2.5 s plus 1 into e to the power minus 2 s over 20 s plus 1 into 10 s plus 1 into 5 s plus 1 to s plus 1. Okay? This Taylor series is just a piece of cake. Okay? It's just a piece of cake. We already can see that we will, we, we know that we need to keep this biggest dominant one untouched because all our time delays that are going to be approximated here uh, are, are, it should be accompanied with the largest one so that we have a good approximation. And in that sense, what do I have? 1 over 10 s plus 1 can be approximated as e to the power minus 10 s. And 1 over 5 s plus 1 is going to be approximated as e to the power minus 5 s. And 1 over s plus 1 is going to be approximated as e to the power minus 1s. And the last one, which is 0.5s plus 1, okay? Did you see that, the, first, the one at the top? So 0.5s plus 1, 
is like 1 plus theta s is e to the power 0.5 s okay simple simple okay and all what we need to do is just substitute substitute all the numbers there so i have 10 multiplied by 0.5 s plus 1 which is e to the power by 0.5 s into e to the power minus 2 s that we already have this here okay and this is divided by 20 s plus 1 which is kept untouched and we are just raising 1 over 10 s plus 1 which is e to the power minus 10 s and 1 over 10 uh, 1 over 5 s plus 1 which is e to the power minus 5 s and 1 over s plus 1 which is e to the power minus s okay so it's, <laughs> it's just simple just having this long thing here so what I have 10 over 20 s plus 1 into e to the power minus what count so that is uh, let me start from here so this is 0.5 minus 2 so it's minus 1.5 minus 11.5 minus 16.5 and uh, minus 17.5 I will do the other way around 1 plus 5 6 16 18 minus 0 0.5 17.5 did I say again that 6, 16, 18, 17.5, right? So minus 0.17.5s, beautiful. And if you tell me, well, if I want to fit a second order plus time delay, <laughs> it's easy. Just keep the second largest one down here. The second largest down here, which means that will be, uh, 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 which, which will be 10 over 20s plus one, into 10 s plus 1 and what do I have I'm going to just take this down by 10 because I already counted it so that will be e from minus 7.5 s so it's as simple as that Taylor series is just a piece of cake and which one is more accurate you, 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 you can't always tell which one is more accurate but Taylor series sorry uh, usually Skogestad method is more accurate considering considering the following uh, the following conditions okay so here we are saying that the Skogestad method okay it is more accurate considering the following condition considering actually the both conditions even apply to the Taylor series to be honest so at least I would say that it is accurate rather than saying more accurate so considering the following conditions so what are the conditions uh, the conditions that we have here <coughs> is that uh, the tau largest divided by tau of next largest should be greater than 1.5 okay and in this case what is my tau largest it was 20 so my tau largest was 20 divided by tau my next largest which is 10 which was equal to 2 definitely is greater than 1.5 then I will have what? I will have a good approximation and in this case I have a good approximation okay so that's all that's all what I need to mention there is another condition in which it says that okay so this is like condition number one so this is like number one and in condition number two it says all taus should be positive okay all taus are positive and definitely the people are positive because if one of them is negative to be unstable and if it's unstable I cannot do the approximation so in this case is saying that if it is stable okay that's one condition and number two not oscillatory okay not oscillatory so these are my two conditions like it is stable it's not oscillatory uh, that means I have no complex roots I have th th the shape of having all s plus 1 s plus 1 s plus 1 uh, uh, so in this case I can use this Kogestad method okay great so this is what we have taken for today it had been a bit long lecture but actually we we we, we learned a lot and remember uh, the, the generic form that we are trying to look at here so we are doing some kind of approximation methods and in our approximation methods in our approximation methods we have taken the Skogestad method where we can fit the first order or second order plus time delay we have taken Taylor series method 
to fit a first order plus or second order plus time delay. However, these are applicable with the pad approximation to approximate higher order systems that that we with a known transfer function to us so that we can deal with that transfer function. However, if we have a figure, okay, we have a response. So we did an experiment and after we did an experiment, we got a response. And if we get some kind of responses that look like that, if I want to fit a first order plus time delay to this to these responses, this is what I need to do. Okay, this is what I need to do. And you can see here for a first order plus time de delay, I'll use a SNK method. However, if I want to fit a second order plus time delay, I'll use a Smith method. If I want to fit a first order plus time delay, I can use the slope intercept method or the initial slope method. Okay, so you can see like there are three methods, more methods to fit a first or plus time delay. And uh, in the other side, on the other side, if I have something which looks like that, which is an under damp process, okay, so this is like, I would write that, I forgot to write that. So I have an under damped, under damped process, okay. And if I have an under damped process, which is oscillatory, which means xi is less than one, so what I need to do, I can use the damping method and we already did this through the overshoot decay ratio and all the other parameters and I'm going to find K times Xi and uh, I can use the Smith method to find the T20 and T60 and this is some kind somehow, somehow sometimes it becomes tricky uh, so we, we need to be careful about it. So these are the methods that we can use uh, to fit uh, a, a, a first order or a second order. In this case uh, of course, here I'm fitting a second order plus time delay. Great. That's all for the approximation methods for today. And tomorrow or the next lecture, we are going to be taking uh, the, the, the second part of, of, of fitting if we have a figure. Okay, if you have a figure, how do you approximate these methods? Till then, uh, we see you for the next lecture and hope for the best. And remember that what you're learning today is something that you're going to give tomorrow and what you're learning today makes you a different person uh, you will not be a different person if you know if you don't learn anything and learning something makes you a different person however how different to be is how much more you're going to learn maybe or how much impact you're going to make from what you learn if you learn little the most impact you'll have is little but if you learn more, you would expect to have a higher impact. Well, which would be a good impact or it would be a bad impact? Learning could have both impacts, good and bad. That all depends on your intentions. And I'm sure that you have good intention of what you're trying to learn today. So all the best and wish you all good luck. Mass learn.